Lorberg, so a few hill, a few uh, flat roads in between. The Amstel Gold for 2016 has just under 64 kilometres of bike racing remaining. We've got uh, 11 riders in total out front, representing 11 teams, and it's been relatively benign behind, with the peloton being paced by Team Sky, representing the reigning champion of this race, Mikhail Kwiatkowski, former world champion and a man on fine form. And a uh, few riders have now decided to try and race across the gap to get involved up front and perhaps put the pressure on the, uh, the peloton behind. It's a total of 34 climbs today over the 248.7 kilometers of bike racing. And uh, those 34 climbs, well, we've got quite a lot of them, many of them out of the way. This was only about 10 climbs left. We've got 24 completed. And this is a significant move with the likes of uh, Jürgen Rollins trying to get involved in there. It's Tosh van der Sander, a uh, little to sue down right But yeah, he's been joined by uh, Bonifacio of Trek Segafredo there as well. So we've got these four riders uh, heading up the road. Those four riders trying to get across as, uh, well, it's an interesting time, isn't it? This uh, bewildering series of loops, it's uh, ever-decreasing circles as they work their way down towards that final finish on the Cowberg at the end of the 200 and, uh, well, just at north of 248 kilometres of racing for a sense of the Cowberg in total. And then they've got that 1,800 metres of racing. The weather has been, well, it's been absolutely perfect all day to this point. Beautiful spring sunshine, but just that uh, signs of uh, slate grey in the distance suggesting that there's a hint of rain in the sky should the wind just uh, blow in the wrong direction for a little while. Kevin Retze is on the front. Tosh van der Sande, it is, of course, uh, for Lado Sedal at the back, as Dan has pointed out to you. And also in there, Janny Mearsman for Eric's quick step, and that is uh, as a strong group, a strong counter. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see just how much of a leeway they're allowed by the group behind. It almost caused some confusion in some ways, didn't it? Team Sky had been riding on the front for uh, the majority of the race, along with Orica Greenedge, but uh, they were just looking over their shoulders at each other once this group of four decided to uh, go up the road. Tosh van der Sander was the man in red from Lotto Sudau, who was the first to make the, the attack. Uh, interesting that Etix Quickstep have chosen to uh, use Meersman here. He did something quite similar in uh, Brabant's appeal on Wednesday. Uh, a race ultimately won by his teammate Peter Vakoc, who we uh, still haven't really seen too much of towards the front okay. of the bunch. In fact, the only point at which we saw him was on the uh, Cowberg, Cowberg, should I say, where he was uh, towards the back. We've now got a rider from Astana also trying to head up the road now. I wonder if that is Diego Rosa. In fact, it's Andre Grivko, number 113, who's uh, heading up. But uh, wouldn't be at all surprised to see Diego Rosso going on a long attack as well. It's something which uh, paid off for him a couple of weeks ago in the Tour of the Basque Country. Uh, we've seen him... Ooh, oh, another problems crash. Problems in the peloton. It's uh, camping, as you might expect, Steph Clement for TM, Team EM Cycling. Local hero who... Well, looks as if that has really hurt. He doesn't look too keen on getting up back on his bike at the moment, and I hope that he's not too uh, badly injured. If you're just uh, joining us, Fabio Fellini crashed in the neutralised section before the race even got underway, and unfortunately he was uh, taken to hospital. We hope he's a little bit better. And one of the riders from Nippo, Vinny Fantini, and there's a domestic beside him, so I'm wondering if that's not uh, Damiano Canego or perhaps Gregor Boll. And we'll uh, wait for full confirmation of that. But again, another rider who doesn't look like uh, he's going to be back on his bike anytime soon. So Nippo Vini Fantini have a rider in the break. I think it's Greg Bowl actually looking at. Uh, um, yeah, Greg Bowl, who would have been one of their favourites, well capable of coming up with a result in this race. He's been top 10 in the past. And uh, disappointment for him. And these crashes, well, they come in rapid succession, especially as we get to the back end of the race, not least because the riders are starting to tire as the distance and the time really starts to take its toll. And, of course, uh, plenty of road furniture, as we've mentioned earlier, making its, uh, making its presence felt. 106 is uh, Bonifacio, Nicola Bonifacio, in this counter-attack. And they're making 
significant inroads into the uh, advantage of the breakaway group, which was well over three and a half minutes not so long ago. They've shaved a minute off that. So fresh legs coming from the peloton, charging across this gap. And at the moment, looking like they're going to get on terms, but where are the bunch behind? Here is the breakaway group of 11 riders up front, as they have been pretty much uh, all afternoon. Well, it took about 42 kilometers before the breakaway managed to uh, make its way clear of the peloton. And then these 11 riders, Cherney you've seen in the orange colors of CCC, Sprandy Polkovitz, uh, Laurent Didier, the Trek rider in the white, the Astana rider in the Kazakh colors is Laurence de Vries of Belgium. Direct Energy's uh, Fabien Grelier is in those uh, a dark brown or with the uh, yellow flashes. Yam cycling, problems behind, but up front, no problems for Larry Warbass, US rider. His compatriot, Alex Howes from Team Cannondale in the green colors there, 28 years of age, takes his position on the front of the breakaway group. We've worked well together. Kevin Retzer for France is de jeu, is uh, the 27-year-old Frenchman. Eighth on a stage of uh, Vuelta Catalonia not so long ago, so clearly has reasonably good legs. Matteo Bono, perhaps the uh, rider with the best Palmares in here, 32 years of age with stage wins in Enico and Terreno Adriatico in years past. Hippo Vinifantini represented by Giacomo Bellato, and those riders working up and over, doing a solid job at the moment, but now their advantage has uh, shrunk to two minutes and 20 seconds, and you'd uh, say there's every chance of that uh, counter-attack group making its way across. Question is, will they manage to uh, hang on clear of the bunch? That is uh, the big question as the breakaway group have a little look around to see what's happening behind us. It's getting very busy behind in Amstel Gold. Join us for the next part after these. At the back of the group, Laurie Warbass is starting to feel the pinch a bit. It's yet another one of these apparently interminable climbs in Amstel Gold for 2016. The leading group of 11 riders has just over two minutes advantage now on a counter attack out of the peloton. Just came in the last 10 kilometers or so. 3.14 back to the bunch. That's pretty much as it's been for the last, uh, what, 40 kilometers or more. The 11 riders up front pushing hard to try and maintain their advantage down the Lorberg, which is a hill number 25 of 34. It's the second time they've been up this. One and a half kilometers in total, about five and a half percent on average, depending on where you start and uh, start the hill. And with just over 56 kilometers remaining, it's all starting to heat up behind uh, this breakaway group will, I believe, be joined fairly soon by this counter-attacking group. Janny Meersman is there. Tosh van der Sande, another crash. Team Rompot involved in this one. Team Rompot have Peter Veening that they want to look after today. It's been a tough time for Team Rompot this week because uh, UCI just suspended uh, the use of disc brakes in professional bike racing. We get a little look at this, and uh, Team Rompot have had to switch to uh, regular caliper brakes during the week, which was no mean feat for their mechanics and their logistics, and that was just down off the back of one of the CCC Sprandy Polkovitsa riders. Looked like a harmless touch of wheels. It's easy for me to say it's harmless. That looked like uh, it hurt. They all hurt, and that was uh, Maritz Lammertink, the Dutch rider, coming to grief on that occasion, but uh, back in the fray very shortly. The counter-attacking group, as I mentioned, Meersman is there on the left-hand side in the blue of Edek's quick step. Tosh van der Sande goes to the front. Bjorn Terrell looks like he's infiltrated this one. And with a big name. It's with Monte Group Gobert these days. And Bonifacio is there for Trek Segafredo, also trying to chase across the gap. We haven't got an update on him lately. Andre Grivko for Astana wanted to get involved in this move as well. Less than two minutes between these ca this counter and this breakaway group up front, continuing to tap out the rhythm on the Lorberg. Dan, it's starting to uh, starting to get busy. You can tell by the frequency of the crashes and the uh, 
changing body language of the peloton. Yeah, things will get increasingly nervous over the next uh, 20 kilometers or so. In fact, there's a, a very big moment for the bunch coming up with just over 42 k's to go, so 13 k's time. Uh, at that point, they will be on a very big, wide road, and there'll be a lot of jostling position because they take a left towards the end of that main road, and then they're into a very, very narrow road and a few twists and turns, which quickly lead on to the next climb of the day at that point, which is the Kreuzberg, uh, not to be confused with the same climb over, or same name of climb over the Tour of Flanders. So that will be a very big sprint for the bunch. It's often the most, one of the most dangerous points in this race as well, as everyone clambers for position at that particular moment. But they're doing pretty well, the uh, four-man group that's gone up the road in between their breakaway that went after 42Ks and the main bunch here behind. Uh, one minute 53, as you can see, is the gap between the breakaway group and the four men just behind. And uh, so that means they've eked out a gap of one minute and 13 seconds, these four, over the main peloton behind. Great to have so many of you along with us uh, on Twitter this afternoon. It's at DQ Sport for myself. It's at uh, Daniel Lloyd One for the man alongside. Nugget 48 uh, wants to know if Matt Heyman is riding today. And he certainly is. Back on domestic duties, the hero of Roubaix just a week ago. And uh, what a week it's been for him. But uh, his teammate Luke Durbridge has done great work in assisting uh, Team Sky in keeping this uh, breakaway group to a reasonable distance ahead. 3.06 between the peloton and the lead group. And this group have uh, just 1.47 to make up. This group of four riders chasing as uh, Johnny Hogerland. Was that him on the floor earlier? We see him at the back of the bunch. Nugget48 wants to know if you're, how come you're not riding for Dimension Data today as well. Of course, the uh, April Fool's prank that uh, keeps on giving. I can tell you he's slim enough. He definitely could uh, think about getting back in the peloton if you fancied it. Well, it was nice that so many people thought that uh, I'd be at all capable of keeping up in a bike race these days. But uh, yeah, April Fool's joke, I won't be making a return to the peloton. But uh, Dimension Data here with Ed Val Bossenhagen. No particular pressure on his shoulders today after what's been quite a busy spring campaign and cobbled campaign for him already. Uh, of course, up there at Paris-Roubaix in the lead group, fighting out for victory this time last week. But uh, it's a race that he could potentially do well at uh, if he's not too tired from uh, the races that have come before this. Jenny Mearsman desperate there for a bottle from anybody at the side of the road. He's obviously run out of, uh, of fluids there and uh, no team cars just behind him for him to call up at the moment in the group where they are. As that Grivko is, it just looks like it hasn't happened for him. I wonder the way he's looking behind him. I wonder if uh, he's not expecting the peloton on his back any second now that we widen the shot. Are we going to see some bike riders uh, behind? Well, not that soon, but certainly it looks as if it's all done for Grivko. So his efforts to get across just about missed the boat on that one uh, because that is uh, was definitely a lift to superstardom, or at the very least, across to the front of the race. Bridie Jenner is uh, asking any chance of a quick roll call of crashed abandoned. Well, Fabio Fellini crashed in the uh, neutralised section, and uh, we understand he was taken to hospital, so get well soon to Fabio after a very unfortunate end over end. Uh, many other riders, Joachim Rodriguez crashed back in the race. Teish Benot uh, was ill and unfortunately uh, had to abandon early on. Uh, Steph Clement we saw on the floor. Rodriguez is certainly back in, not sure about Clement. Hogerland we saw making his way back on after... Um, well, I'm not sure whether he could have been back in the car, so we've no confirmation on what uh, his issue was. Matteo Bono, Didier De Vries, et cetera, et cetera, still tapping it out in the breakaway group. 140 now is their advantage over that uh, group of chasers. As we get another break out of the way, we'll be back very shortly. And they finally hit the rain, that rain, they've been chasing it around the countryside, or it's been chasing them one way or another. The uh, arm warmers are going on for Larry Warbus. Plenty of other riders wishing that they had a uh, little bit of extra, extra lycra to put on board as well, because the rain is falling in a big way, and it's now just 134 the advantage to the 11 riders out front between themselves and the uh, four chasers behind with the peloton now inside three minutes for the first time in a long, long time. And faces scrunched up to suggest that these conditions are not quite what they were anticipating a little while ago. Larry Warbass, big turn on the front. These are the four chasers. 
charging down another one of these hills and on the front Tosh van der Sande is the one that gets to pick the line they haven't quite hit this uh, rain shower yet so they've got that to look forward to very shortly Morbas is uh, replaced by Laurent Didier Inside 50 kilometers remaining in Amstel Gold for 2016. These are the 11 riders on the front. Kevin Retze for Francais de Jeu takes his position on the front as the weather conditions have changed dramatically for the worse. Is this uh, down for a while or is this a, just a single shower that's dousing these uh, breakaway riders? I think it's probably the latter, but this is going to make them, uh, well, feel like they've really been in a bike race if they didn't already know that. CCC Sprandy Polkovitz's Joseph Cherny. It's a little bit of extra upper body movement indicating just how this gradient is starting to hurt these riders. They've been out front for a long time now. Remember, they're uh, almost 200 kilometers in their legs. Took about 40k, 42k for the break to go. So they've uh, north of 150 kilometers up front for those 11 riders as we uh, go back to look at the four riders that are trying to make their way across at a distance of just over a minute and a half at the moment. And these conditions, well, the riders had kind of got used to it being a dry race. They got rid of their clothes for the most part, their, uh, their wet gear. They'll be pretty warm. The legs will be OK, but uh, the extremities always feel it, don't they? Yeah, I'm not sure how warm they are going to be at the moment. The temperatures weren't particularly high uh, today, even before the rain, although even though there was uh, sunshine about here. But it looks almost to me like there was almost some sleet a few moments ago. It looked uh, to be kind of hovering a bit too much for it to be just rain. I'm not sure if that was just my eyes deceiving me, but... Uh, but the way they scrunched up their face suggested that it was it was hurting a yeah, little bit. Yeah. yeah, it really did come down hard, and uh, you can see Alex Howes there trying to blow some warmth back into his fingers, so I think actually they have got uh, pretty cold out there, and it's going to be cold in a bunch as well when you're not working quite so hard, and uh, as you said, Declan, the... Uh, Rain capes and uh, arm warmers for a lot of riders have already been taken back to the team car, so it's not exactly like they've got uh, something which they can just take out of the back pocket immediately to uh, give them some extra warmth. Not that they'd necessarily want to right at this moment in time, because they are coming to the big crunch points of the race and the final few climbs, which are going to help to decide uh, the outright winner at the end of this uh, edition of Amstel Gold. Team Sky still on the front with a full complement uh, of riders, they as they have been really pretty much since live coverage of this race started. We uh, in the ad break saw Ben Swift was the rider doing the uh, the work most recently on the front for Team Sky, of course, suggesting that uh, he won't be one of their protected riders for today. It's all about Kwiatkowski. That uh, would be an understandable tactic for sure from Team Sky because Kwiatkowski is in good form and is the defending champion, knows how to get it done. At the back end of an Amstel Gold, these riders, so oh, they'll certainly be feeling it. And I always feel sorry. I certainly do feel uh, more sorry for professional bike riders because they've got well, fat percentages down south of uh, 10% and the amazing power to weight ratios. And that's always to their benefit, particularly when they're going uphill. But uh, whenever it rains, uh, there are few human beings that suffer as much as uh, a professional bike rider. They really are suffering at the moment. At least they're out front. They don't have the same stresses that riders in the peloton do, but trying to stay upright as well as uh, trying to stay warm. Tommy Vuckler just uh, a few uh, yards off the back, as if to say not much enjoying this, really. And he's just suddenly realized, well, he'd get a better get back in the slipstream, particularly as the road's going up. Uh, Tommy V for Dimension Data has, say, uh, Oh, sorry, Direct Energy has uh, a rider in the breakaway group up front. Fabian Crelier at the other end of his career, the 21-year-old. You'd definitely think that this kind of a finish might suit Vockler if he'd fancied going for a long one, but it really depends on the sort of form he's got. Not in anything like the form we've seen uh, of 
years past. Now, I think he did take uh, a win earlier on this year in one of the smaller French races, but he, along with uh, Ryder Hegedal there of Team Trek Segafredo and one of the Giants Alpecin riders, which is uh, Chad Harger by the looks of things, all being distanced by the peloton as we speak. Might look relatively steady at the front of the peloton with riders amassed across the road trying to vie for position, but actually it is quite hard con constantly. And if you do find yourself at the back, as uh, they have done, it's quite easy for a gap to open up and uh, have to be a, make a really big effort to get back on and back in contact with the group. Yeah, pro bike riders are often their worst enemies because they look so good on a bike that even when they're suffering like dogs, it actually looks relatively yep. benign and easy, doesn't it? You know? So they're uh, hauling themselves up this next climb. This is the Gulperberg, second time they've been up this one. Yeah, 700 meters at uh, just over 8% average. And they're still managing to make about 15 kilometers an hour at 8%. And remember, they've got just over 200 kilometers in the legs at this point. And it is the young rider. Just 21 years of age, Grelier, who's shown that he's got uh, Great strength, great endurance for a young man. And leading the charge up this hill, and they're starting to distance uh, a couple of riders behind. Looks like Cherney has pulled the plug, and it's all done for himself. Uh, Kevin Retz has also been distanced. Warbass is uh, hanging on up there. As indeed is De Vries of Astana. Alex Howes is there for Team Cannondale. And Mario Bono almost missed the boat there, but he's managed to uh, drag himself onto the back. Also, the uh, AG Tour Le Mondial rider, Matteo Montagutti from Italy, the 32 year old, has just about made it back into the group after that big effort from Grelier, who's clearly a man with a big future. 122 now to these uh, four chasers. They are making headway, not as much as they were. So that initial burst of energy carried them, what, a minute, minute and a half across the gap. And now it's uh, coming down in ones and two seconds uh, every uh, kilometer. Meersman, van der Sande, Bonifacio and Bjorn Turau are the four riders that are in the, at the bottom of this uh, climb, the Gulberberg. Next one coming up after that is the Kreuzberg which is a significant rendezvous in this race. So the bunch will be uh, not too far behind, not much more than a minute, if even that, from this group to the bunch who will be approaching the bottom of the Gulperberg and a big crowd at the uh, top of this hill because they know that things are getting busy now. Mearsman from Edix Quick Step, he'll have plenty of fans in there and he'll have a team supporter at the top as well. It's a slow hill, and it's a good spot to uh, hand out bottles. And it's a perfect time for riders to be getting bottles as well, with 45k remaining. Riders at the back are going to struggle to make it to the front in time for this. We'll be back after these. Well, at the back of the bunch, they're feeling the pinch a little bit because this flurry of rain has definitely dampened the enthusiasm of uh, many of the riders at the back of the breakaway group, too. Well, it's, uh, it's a bit miserable out there for all the riders. This shower of rain has definitely changed the character of Amstel Gold. It was beautiful spring sunshine uh, for the riders for such a long time. 122 now back to the four riders chasing who uh, their well, their advance has definitely been stymied a little bit. It's been slowed somewhat uh, in recent kilometers. Will they be able to make it across that gap before the bunch come? They've got 110 on the main bunch behind, which is 43 kilometers remaining. And the next uh, rendezvous, the Kreuzberg, coming up. The summit of which is reached with 41.3 kilometers uh, left in the race, according to the road book. And this uh, breakaway group, of course, are going to hit it any minute now. Bono, De Vries, uh, Montaguti, Retza, Warbas. Retza's managed to make it back in. Has Grelier did all the damage on that last hill. Cherney has been jettisoned. This is the chase group trying to close that gap of one minute and 17 seconds to the uh, thinned out breakaway group as the conditions have uh, drawn in, in, well, they've turned very, very nasty indeed. And for these riders, they'll really be feeling it, those fingers and toes. 
and plenty else besides will really start to uh, yeah and you get that uh, that indication of just how cold this is trying to shake a little bit of uh, warmth back into the hands it's well, it doesn't often work really but it just makes you feel as if you're doing something Bonifacio the Italian rider for Trek Segafredo it was who was trying to shake a bit of life into his hands they've got just over a minute advantage on the peloton which is being towed along as it has for so much of the afternoon by uh, Team Sky they're in perfect position at the moment trying to set things up late on for Mia Kwiatkowski Nordag and Golas doing a lot of the legwork for that squad. Cherney's been picked up by the four chasers. Will he have the energy to get back in? Jettisoned at the last hill mm -hmm. under the effort of uh, Grelier, the young Frenchman with direct energy. Now picking up uh, the front of the race, Montaguti puts himself on the front as they reach this little section of uh, hills, and this is a sketchy part of the race. Yeah, this is the bit I was talking about uh, about an hour ago, Declan, the left-hand turn off that big main road. No problem at all, of course, if you're in a breakaway uh, like they are here at the front, but from the bunch behind, there's going to be a big sprint, and it looks to me to be slightly headwind, uh, the speed that they were travelling along that road a few moments ago, so that's going to make the fight uh, even harder for position. A headwind just means uh, more people can kind of swarm around and get to the front, and uh, means it much harder to line out and uh, get rid of a few people on the run-in, so I'd like to get a shot in a couple of minutes' time with the peloton coming into this, because this is the next climb of the day as well, the Kreuzberg. Well, try and send 200 bike riders between those uh, those two little walls uh, on that bridge there. Uh, that is a significant pinch point, if that be the phrase, and it certainly is as we uh, survey the scene on the riders behind trying to get into contention. At the back, Cherney is dead wood, really. And those chasers now just 113 behind the breakaway. Uh, the bunch behind is just over a minute back as well. And you can't begin to imagine the frantic activity that's going on in that bunch. There's elbows and everything else flying, trying to get look riders up on the uh, bike paths on the left hand side of the road. Riders in the gutter on the right hand side. The bunch splits, comes back together again. And riders immediately trying to take advantage of that to move up the outside. Vernippo, Vinny Fantini and uh, Team Lampre. And riders are popping left, right and center because we're at the business end of uh, this race. And you can tell that it's really starting to hurt as Eric's quick step uh, take to the uh, traffic island. They're going to use any means, fair and foul, to try and get into position. It's Howes on the front of the breakaway group. It'd be nice to see the bunch, but uh, we have the breakaway group. This is the front of the race. 8.5% uh, for average and 800 metres with a max of 17%. So now that's really starting to hurt. Look at uh, Howes putting the hurt on his uh, fellow countryman, Larry Warbass, at the back of the group. And that uh, bunch coming to a grinding halt through the first of those left-hander into the right-hander, back into the left-hander across the bridge. These guys have already managed to make their way through that section. Laurent Didier, who was in the early breakaway, has now been uh, jettisoned by the chasers. He was really suffering, Didier, when the, uh, the hammer went down from the rider from Direct Energy, Grelier. Uh, and the penultimate or the last climb that we saw where the uh, breakaway split into a couple of groups. So as you said, Declan, they uh, have been overtaken now by the four men who went up the road about 30 kilometers ago, amongst them Gianni Mersman and uh, Dillier's teammate there as well, Bonifacio, who uh, looks like he's been suffering a little bit in the cold. He's been shaking his hands, as you said, Declan. Hasn't been doing as much work on the front as the likes of Van der Sander, who's uh, distanced actually the other three at the moment. And uh, oh, you want Chiro there as well. Oh, apologies, uh, Dan. It was journey I, I fell from there because he thought he was going to get to the top of this hill with that uh, with that chase group, but he's from the early break. Dropped out of one group, dropped out of another. I don't think he lasts too too long in this one coming as well. Look at the way the uh, Sky team is lined across the road, protecting their position at the front. It's as much to uh, to block the advance of others, not in any illegal way, but just uh, don't make it easy for riders to come around you. 
Yeah, positioning onto the small roads is uh, so crucial for that exact reason, Declan. Earlier on in the race, you can then uh, effectively block the road, safe in the knowledge that uh, you're all where you need to be. And at the moment, uh, Team Sky have certainly been doing a lot of work so far in this race, but uh, looks like they are working almost entirely for last year's winner, Michal Kwiatkowski. Well, they do have some other cards to play still in the form of NL. Just trying to decide exactly who will benefit from this uh, rain that they're experiencing here and uh, who's going to find it a lot harder. But uh, meanwhile, at the front, Alex Howes, who I was a little bit surprised to see in the early breakaway today. Looks like he's uh, the strongest of them at the moment. He's distanced ever so slightly the uh, rest of the riders, as you can see, just behind. He was up there at the World Championships last year in uh, a course which kind of favoured a similar sort of rider at Amstel Gold. And I know he particularly likes this race, so I did expect him to uh, to wait in the bunch and uh, try his hand a bit later on. But uh, found himself in the early breakaway after 42 k's of racing and uh, is now determined to stay in front as long as he possibly can. Two minutes and 14 between him and the... Uh, Peloton still being led by Team Sky here behind. Bit of a decision for him to make. Does he press on or does he wait for the riders behind? 28-year-old Alex has 12th uh, in the World Championships last year. Dan, as you, uh, as you mentioned, certainly that was a race that suited him. Is this a race that suits him? It is at the moment stage of USA Pro Challenge as well. As he's picked up by the uh, the other riders from the breakaway. And Grelier, who's doing all the damage on the previous hill, finds that uh, might have used it up a little bit early. And that's... Uh, Perhaps the impetuosity of youth teeting up inside 40k to go in Amstel Gold 2016. Are these riders going to get in? Well, Team Sky on the front of the bunch at the moment. The front of the race is uh, being held by riders remaining from the early breakaway group. And they've got 127 on this group, led by Tosh van der Sande. But just behind him, Johnny Mearsman, Bjorn Turau is there as well. And they are trying to get back on terms and to get on terms for the first time today with the riders from the early breakaway group. It hasn't happened yet. Front of the bunch being marshaled by Michal Golas of uh, Team Sky. Thinking about what he can do for his uh, fellow countryman, Michal Kwiatkowski. Nestling safely in there to Osser number one, sitting uh, in the top ten riders and quite comfortable at the moment. Tosh van der Sande on the front of the chase group, which was uh, numbering, well, for a little while, it was numbering about five or six riders. Now it's down. Is this uh, Albicini, maybe? Uh, we'll see now. Our team Arica Greenedge have decided to kick it off from the bunch behind, and they are trying to put one over on Team Sky. Team Sky have had control of the front of the bunch for such a long time, but now the attacks are coming in, and Arica Greenedge have strength and depth. Yeah, it is Albicini who's gone on the attack. The man from Switzerland is uh, drawing out some other riders behind. We can see about Pauls trying to go across to him. Didn't quite manage it, but we've got Lars Petter Nordhaug there as well. Dylan Tunes, the rider from BMC in the red. Looks like he's about to try and make his move to get across. But uh, this is an interesting development from Orica Greenedge. We've been talking about Simon Gerrans and Michael Matthews. Whether or not they want to try and make it even harder than it already has been for their team leaders, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, a few people were asking earlier if Matt Heyman, last, year, uh, last week's winner at Paris Bay, was in the race, and I can tell you very much is in the race. He was uh, just up there inside the top ten as Albacini made his attack. So there's a team with a plan, and uh, we're starting to see how it's playing out at the moment. Well, team Orica Greenedge have massive strength and depth. Team Sky also have uh, plenty of riders with ability, and they're trying desperately to rein in this veteran Swiss rider, Albacini, who himself, uh, on another team on another day, might have fancied his chances. But uh, now he's very much, uh, well, racing to try and win the race, but mostly he's just trying to put it up to the chasers behind and see what this does about thinning things out. Speaking of thinning things out, the uh, breakaway group behind, well, Grelier, was ripping the legs off them a couple of hills ago. Last uh, time up, or the last hill they went up, Geyser Bosveg found himself tailed off by the breakaway group as uh, now they've knitted back together again. And we see uh, Matteo Bono is there. Lawrence de Vries in that uh, sky blue of Astana is there. Alex Howes. These are the chasers on the back. Bjorn Turau, son of uh, Dietrich Turau. T.I. Rally star of the late 70s. 
would have enjoyed these uh, kind of conditions, would have enjoyed this kind of a race as well. And uh, Bjorn Terau doing the family name proud. Just finds himself a few yards uh, behind Meersman, but safely in there. Meersman's tucked into the slipstream. Tosh van der Sande, who does that uh, don't try this at home routine on the descent. Much easier for uh, Terau. He can sit high in the saddle, in the slipstream. Lots of talk, of course, in the week about the uh, disc brakes being banned by the UCI, or at least them suspending the use of them in the peloton as a result uh, of that accident that happened to Fran Van Toso, Fran Van Toso of uh, Team Movistar in Roubaix last week. He wrote that uh, impassioned open letter, which the UCI decided to act upon. Team Rompot, as I said earlier, have been forced to uh, switch all their bikes. They were totally committed to these disc brakes. For the smaller teams, it is difficult to have uh, caliper brake setups and disc brake setups and uh, every other uh, thing they've got to have as well for time trial, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Not an issue at the moment for Johnny Mearsman, just thinking about, uh, well, disc brakes, of course, would have been a bit of an advantage in the wet, wouldn't they? That is the, the one place where disc brakes really come into their own wet weather braking. Hasn't worked out for Albacini. Well, Seth Van Mark now going on the attack for Team Lotto NL Jumbo, a man that we're uh, used to seeing right at the front of races that involve cobble, so it's been his time over the last couple of weeks, but uh, he's continued on for one week further. I doubt we'll see him in Liège Baston Liège this time next week. Nothing really going clear, though, at the moment. Everyone very alert in that uh, much reduced bunch. It has had the effect of whittling it down to, what, 60 or 70 riders. Gaps have started to open up, but uh, kind of status quo here at the front at the moment as they go on to the Fromberg. They'll go up this climb, which is uh, 1.6 k's long, an average gradient of uh, around about 4%. They'll then descend down onto the main road, and they'll be on there for uh, a couple of kilometers or so before taking another left-hand turn, which takes them up to the Kürtenberg, which is uh, arguably the most difficult climb of the race. It's uh, extremely steep at the very foot, and it just drags on for quite some time after that. So interesting, Diego Ross is just hovering up towards the front in the turquoise of Astana. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him go uh, at some point soon and try and make an attack. Breakaway group, body language uh, is a lot more hangdog than the uh, the bunch behind. Look at this, it's definitely getting busy. Van Mark hit it first, and then drops back into the peloton. Preben van Heck starting to make his presence felt towards the front, the Belgian national road race champion. Team Astana. Remember, they've got a former winner of this race, several former winners uh, in this race today, including Kreuziger, who went for a long one back in 2013, went on the Cowberg on the penultimate uh, run up it with over 20K to go. And they'll hit the, uh, the top of the Cowberg for the penultimate time with 21.1 kilometers remaining, according to the road book, Van Heck. Roll of the dice here, nicely timed too. Is that Bacalance that fancies it too? Yeah. AG Tour Le Mondial want to get involved in this in the early break, have a rider up the road, but now thinking about uh, the riders behind and what opportunities they've got. Next one coming from Arica Green Edge, and they have certainly decided to roll the dice early. Yeah, Daryl Limpy from South Africa is the rider from Oregon Green Edge, who's just accelerating slightly on the front of that bunch at the moment. This is making it a very, very hard race. Now, I can't see uh, a huge group coming to the Kalberg on the last time up it, and I think this plays more into the favour of uh, riders like Gilbert if he's feeling OK after that instant 10 days or so ago. Team Sky still up there with uh, Kwiatkowski, who's had to do very, very little in the way of uh, work so far today. Very much protected towards the front, no fighting for position for him. You can see him hovering in around about 14th place on the right-hand side of your screens. Inside the top 15 for sure, but uh, yeah, we've got a few riders from Team Lotto, NL Jumbo up here as well. Set Van Mark is still there. Strange how things have changed over the years. When I mean, that team was known as Rabobank, they very much had uh, all the responsibility of chasing and setting things up in this race, but uh, it has changed now, and responsibility has fallen on other teams. From the Fromberg, it's uh, 1,600 metres long, so it's one of the longer hills in this, uh, in this race. Certainly at the back end, 44% average, and Daryl Impey around the corner. Gradient steepened again, and he went again, and that stretched the bunch thin once more. It's still a significant size of group that are involved here. 
Not too many of them keen to uh, stick their noses in the wind as a result of that impetus there from uh, Daryl Impey, a man who, well, you know, if it, if they had backed him, it wouldn't have been the worst choice either because they really do have a bunch of strong riders. Arica Green Edge, Jani Meersman, Tosh van der Sande, Bjorn Terau still uh, in no man's land in between. They've shaved that advantage now of what's left of the breakaway group to one minute, but they've just got a little bit over 20 seconds, so it's not going to work out for them unless someone can come over from the uh, from the bunch. Where's the next attack going to come from? Meanwhile, up front, this is the breakaway group that have been out front all day, and what a great job Alex Howes is doing. Clearly, he's the strong man of the breakaway group now. Six riders up front as they thread their way through that railway bridge. At the back is uh, Lawrence de Vries of uh, Astana. And he's got riders towards the front of the main group behind. Look at the way it is lined out under that uh, effort from Daryl Impey of Team Arica Greenedge. How many riders are going to get back in after that climb? Not as many as might have done. Well, just over 30 kilometers remaining, and Team Arica Green Edge are really starting to kick it off in Amstel Gold for 2016. We've still got a breakaway group up front of uh, six riders. They're chased by three in between, just um, under uh, a minute between the leaders and those uh, that group of three chasers. And then the bunch, well, not much more than, uh, well, indeed, less than 20 seconds behind these three chasers. And that is to a large extent because of the recent animation coming from Team Arica Green Edge. Attacks coming in from Lotto NL Yumbo as well and other squads that fancy uh, showing what they've got a little bit earlier on. Team Sky, who did so much of the chasing for so much of the afternoon, have slotted in from uh, around about sort of 15th rider onwards. And that's scattered the cows in a big way, hasn't it? Because, uh, well, you can see nothing like a charging peloton in the UCI World Tour. Amstel Gold, the 51st edition. Larry Warbass on the front for Team EAM. As we get a little look at what the uh, riders have to face now. This uh, long loop. Yeah, this is the uh, climb that we were talking about five or ten minutes ago. It, it is very, very steep here at the bottom of the Kreuzenberg. You can see the gradient ramps up there towards 22%. I understand uh, you told me earlier, Declan, that this is the steepest road in the Netherlands. Yes, 22% uh, at its maximum, as illustrated on screen there. And uh, I'm given to understand it's the steepest road that you will find in all of the Netherlands. Uh, you get steeper in other countries, but that doesn't mean this isn't steep. It's very, very steep. Even if it was the only hill you had to climb all day and it was, it was a shop at the top of it and you could freewheel home, it would still feel pretty difficult. Can you imagine what it's like after over 200 kilometers of bike riding? Well, 150 plus of which has been spent out front. For Montaguti, it feels pretty bad for the rest of his breakaway companions not least Grelier at the on the left hand side of the road just 21 years of age first year as a pro he's killing himself to stay in there and doing a great job yeah, I'd love to get a view now of the peloton as they make their way into this climb I'm definitely expecting some reasonably big names to make a move towards the bottom of this it's a great climb to do an attack on because at the top it just has a long almost false flat plateau. It doesn't descend immediately after the top of the climb, and that means that there's no time for people to recover. So if you do manage to get a gap on the rest of what remains of the bunch and uh, you're feeling strong, then you can certainly get some big daylight between yourselves and the rest. Well, van der Sander's going well for Lotto Sudal, and the red has put a little bit of distance between himself and Janny Meersman, and he's pressing on. It's only 700 metres long. That's a short one, but it's that steep that you can uh, close uh, or create massive gaps. Lotto NL Yumbo next to go. BMC starting to show their hand. Remember, they've got Philippe Gilbert, and it's all come to a grinding halt at the back of the peloton. It's going to be tough for those riders to get back involved in this. And this is uh, 
starting to stretch out into a little counter. Yes, but Jan Lindemann of uh, Team Lotto NL Jumbo there in the yellow. I think that's Dylan Churns of BMC in the red who's uh, followed him and gone straight past. Looked to be uh, Jan Backlance as well from 82R making another move there. So he's particularly sprightly at the moment. Darrell Impey still doing the work behind of keeping things as steady as he can in the peloton. You can see the gaps are starting to open up and uh, that could be partly due to the crash into the foot of this climb. But once again, just highlighting how important positioning is in this race. You do not want to be at the back. You do not want to be at a standstill before a 22% gradient. That's exactly the situation that a lot of riders found themselves in. Bacalance continuing on then. He's uh, managed to get a five or ten second gap over the rest of the peloton. But uh, with Darrell Limpy on the front riding that hard, I don't think this is going to go very far. Great effort from uh, Bacalance. Great effort too from van der Sande because he finds that his strength in distancing his uh, two breakaway companions means that he is still in position or in position to just tag on to this group over the top of the hill it's a narrow advantage on the peloton the peloton now just over a minute behind uh, the leaders up front and will this uh, will this group be given an opportunity to press on i think it's going to be tough for them but uh, well they've given themselves a racer's chance and they're certainly making it easier for their teammates behind Well, there's every colour there, isn't there? In that sky from grey to blue. In a wonderful ascending order of shade. It's a beautiful sky. No one looking at the sky at the moment because uh, riders trying to clip across this gap. Inside 30k to go. You know you're at the business end of one of the major classics in world racing. It's a relative stripling in terms of uh, classic bike racing, but it is uh, 50 years old. This is the 51st edition of a race that first took place back in 1966. It's always been called the Amstel Gold. It's always had the same uh, sponsor. Yeah. It's always been the big, big rendezvous for Dutch riders. It's been a while since the Dutch uh, Dutchman won it, 2001, so it's a long way back. They've 17 wins in total, 12 wins for Belgium, last of those uh, 2014. I need to remind you, Philippe Gilbert is one of the pre-race favourites. Six wins for Italy. 2012, uh, their last victory. And Gasparotto is in the field for Wanty Group. Gobert could do a great job. Is in good form as well. Who would bet against him? He's definitely on the list of favourites. Three wins for uh, Switzerland, last of those back in 1998. And Germany's last victory of their three was uh, back in 2007. Yeah, Gasparotto's uh, still there. He's in about uh, sixth or seventh position there now, riding for Wanty Group Gobert. He's a group that's been distanced amongst them. Matt Heyman and also Norwegian champion Edvald Borsenhagen of Team Dimension Data there. Sparali also there for Team Dimension Data as well, as is Visconti. Slightly surprised to see uh, the Italian, former Italian champion distance on that last climb there. And Gilbert as well. So there's uh, some big news for you. Philippe Gilbert doesn't look like he's going to be fighting it out for the win on this particular occasion. So inside a minute for these riders, they're in trouble. And... Uh... Getting busy here in Amstel Gold for 2016. We're inside the final 27 kilometers, and uh, there are riders have been jettisoned. Some very significant names. Edvel Bosenhagen is struggling. Philippe Gilbert, it's not going to happen for him today. He's out the back, and that is a very select group. Gilbert is pressing on. He's trying to get back in touch with that group, but uh, he must know at this point that it's all about uh, Liège, Baston Liège next week because it's not going to happen for him for a repeat in Amstel Gold. His three victories will have to stay at three. Jan Ras can breathe a sigh of relief. He's uh, the overall uh, record holder. Five victories in Amstel Gold, including four in a row towards the end of the 70s. Philippe Gilbert at uh, hand injury, clearly still costing him dear. And it must be, uh, well, his, his preparation was very much uh, compromised, wasn't it? So now 43 seconds between the leaders and the peloton behind as they have a little review. This is the head of the race with 
26 kilometers remaining in Amstel Gold for 2016. The riders out front as they have been all day. Larry Warbass is there. Alex Howes, his uh, compatriot in the green of uh, Team Cannondale. Montaguti, Bono and De Vries. The paired down group of five riders from the initial seven. Make that six riders. Grelli is hanging on like grim death for He's just at 21 years of age, the youngest rider in there. So six riders from 11, and now with a 40 seconds advantage. But it's starting to get busy, and that is a much, much thinner group than you might expect with just 25 and a half kilometers to go down. Yeah, uh, first really we've seen of uh, Roman Kreutzer, but you're right, Declan. It has been a much harder edition of the race this year so far than uh, it has been in my mind for the last couple of years. Things are coming back together ever so slightly. Uh, you've got a very small glimpse there of Simon Gesker of Team Giant Alperson. Three of those riders there hovering towards the back. Vakoc is still there, the Czech champion. Seems to have been hovering at the back of whatever is the front group ever since we came on air, really. He was at the back of the bunch up the Kalberg last time up. And he's now at the back of that group of 60 or 70 is, or so is riders. Is in trouble? Is it a surprise to I'm see him I'm not sure. As I said earlier, I don't know his riding style enough to know whether perhaps he's just more comfortable being at the back perhaps he's not great at positioning on small roads but nevertheless he's uh, he's still in there yeah riders uh, still in there but uh, hanging on and it's not looking good for them at this point include Philippe Gilbert who's trying to get back into the action but finds himself distanced by the peloton on, uh, is that the peloton just in front? It's a group anyway, and it's worth chasing across to. But for Philippe Gilbert, just stretches the back a little, feels the pain, and perhaps feeling his uh, ears a little bit. Bjorn Terau is at the back of this group. He was up the road not so long ago. He's done his bit to try and win this race. Hasn't worked out on this occasion, and he'll just... Uh, Roll along in this group, which is being led by uh, by Team BMC, trying to get Philippe Gilbert back in action. And there's, yeah, a nice close-up of his uh, those three fingers taped together. One of those fingers has had pins inserted in it in the last few days as a result of that uh, incident with those motorists. Like Vliegen, it was that uh, was with him at training. It's uh, Demarkey that is helping. Gilbert to try and get back into the into the fray, into the action. Unless uh, controlling his bike was a problem and he found himself at the back of the bunch. Doesn't look good for him, though, at the moment. That is not a big bunch, is it? With 24 kilometers remaining, Lotto Sudal. Kreuziger is, uh, is in there. Got a sight of uh, Danny Moreno. That's uh, Mario Trent in there for Edix Quickstep. He gets up that finishing hill. He's got a sprint. Be impressive if he could manage that. He hasn't been mentioned as one of the pre-race favourites, but uh, certainly a man who could do a job. The riders looking behind themselves to see, uh, oh, what do I do here? Because uh, several of those riders will be thinking more about uh, teammates We have to take your hat off to the riders in the breakaway, don't you? They've done a sterling job, really, of uh, keeping a hold of some sort of a lead over what's left of the group behind. Uh, Peloton certainly hasn't been uh, riding at a slow pace. We can see the, just from the fact that it's uh, reduced in numbers quite significantly that they have been riding hard over these uh, last few climbs. So to still have uh, almost 40 seconds of a lead after being out there from kilometre 42 is a testament to the guy's strength here at the front. Lawrence de Vries on the front for Team Astana. Rolling through AG Tour Le Mondial, the brown, white and blue colours. of uh, Monteguti, the Italian. Alex Howes there in the uh, green of uh, Cannondale as we switch back to the chasing peloton. Peloton within 40 seconds now. Concerned less, I think, really with the riders from the breakaway group. That's not to... Uh, not to decry their wonderful efforts because the breakaway group have ridden wonderfully, but surely they are on their way back at this point. And it's now thoughts about trying to set up teammates and trying to set up yourself into the finishing hill with that. Let's review the closing stages of this race. Heading towards uh, the Cowberg for the penultimate time summit of which is reached with uh, 21.1 kilometers remaining. With just uh, over 19 kilometers remaining, then they'll hit that, uh, they'll get the bell. 
and then they've got uh, two more uh, hills before that final ascent of the Cowberg. So four hills left. Two of them are the Cowberg. Approaching the outskirts of Valkenburg now. It's played host to the World Championships on five occasions, 1938, 48, 79, 98, and 2012. And that's a record. Tour de France in 1992 and 2006. It's also uh, Lopez Vuelta España as well, of course. Jan Ras won here in 1979. Looking at riders tailed off and out of contention. Tom de Molen, the local favourite. Well, he didn't exactly talk up his chances. And Team Giant Alpacine also have the likes of Warren Bargui and uh, Simon Geschke that could possibly do a job for them once they hit the bottom of the Cowberg next time round. So it's not going to be Amstel Gold 2016 for Tom de Mullen. He has bigger fish to fry later in the season. Now I think he's just uh, hoping that that motorbike would disappear because he's had enough attention, really. Yeah, it's one of the bad sides to being one of the most famous riders in a particular race. And we saw it with Jules Bear as well, that uh, cameras do like to focus in on them as, uh, as they're suffering in the wrong place and not the place that they'd like to be. Next time at the Cowboy then, and uh, Grelier looks like once again he's about to get dropped. He's uh, looked that way though for quite some time over the previous climbs, having been the instigator really in uh, halving the numbers of the breakaway after really accelerating on one of the earlier climbs today. So we're down to five now at the front of affairs. Great effort from Grelier, he's just 21 years of age, first year as a pro, and this is uncharted waters for him because the distance is ratcheting up. 248.7 kilometers at the total, and we've got, what, just over 20 of those kilometers remaining. So he's well north of uh, 200 kilometers now as the bunch hits the bottom of the hill, not too far behind the breakaway group. They're not gonna get to the top ahead of the bunch, or are they? It's gonna be a close run thing. Laurie Warbass is on the front for Team EM Cycling. Grelier, we see pedaling squares it's all up for him he's uh, hit the wall in every sense edix quick step take it up on the front of the bunch lars petter nordhaug is showing towards the front for team sky trying to get things organized as lawrence de Vries for team astana looks to be last man standing the white of the am cycling larry warbass tom de Mola gets the cheers of the crowd polite applause he is a massive superstar in this neck of the woods. Well, here goes Bob Youngles, a Luxembourg national champion, riding for Etix Quickstep. He's the latest man to try and make his move with just over 20 kilometers remaining on this race. And that looks like Battling, the Italian rider, who's come over to the Lotto NL Jumbo team, a, a stage winner a couple of times at the Giro d'Italia on tough stages. Not mentioned him so far in our broadcast, but uh, certainly an outsider for this race. And at the moment, everyone behind now looking at each other. Yeah, Battling, uh, as you said, a couple of stage wins in the Giro d'Italia. He's well capable of sprinting from a small group, a sprinter uh, per se, but he knows how to sniff out a good late race attack, and this could well be an interesting one. Bob Youngles is a superstar uh, time trial rider, well capable of generating the big watts to get across the gap, but it doesn't look as if those riders are going to be given that opportunity because Lotto Sedal controlling things out the front team BMC. How do they change their plans now with the absence of Philippe Gilbert? Well, yeah, they're going to have to uh, change plans completely, aren't they? Warren Barguil there for uh, Giant Alpacin on the left-hand side. Good to see him back. But it seems to be the young riders at the front of affairs for Team BMC, from what I have seen over the last 10 or 15 kilometres. Uh, Dylan Tunes has been up there, and that looked to me like Luke Vliegen was also uh, hovering towards the front. Well, here's Gilbert getting the applause. He's out of contention now. DeMarkey stays with him dutifully. The rest of the BMC team trying to stay up there, there, thereabouts. Remember, they've got uh, Sammy Sanchez. Not sure if he's made it into the group. We did see Dylan Tunes a little uh, while ago. And as you mentioned there, Dan uh, Loic Vliegen was also involved in that little road traffic uh, altercation. Thank you. And he's managed to make it in. He didn't get his fingers broken, in fairness to him. Now, ah, Bobby Ungles driving along on the front. Elbows out, putting down the watts. The road starting to level off after the climb. 
And he's about to hit the line and get the bell with uh, 19 kilometers remaining and a uh, total of three climbs. Gul Hemmerweg comes about three kilometers from now, then the Bemmelerberg with uh, just over eight kilometers remaining. And they hit the uh, bottom of the Cowberg with two and a half kilometers left in the Amstel Gold, after which they've got that 1,800 meters. So Sky starting to uh, lose riders, including Kwiatkowski, would you believe it? The reigning champion of the Amstel Gold, and who would have believed it? They uh, put all their eggs in the Kwiatkowski basket. He looked to be in good shape and uh, well to the fore on uh, all the climbs that we've seen of late. But that's it for Mihal Kwiatkowski. So we're going to have a new champion this year. Or at least someone who didn't win it last year. There's a few uh, former champions in there. Gasparotto's won. Bob Youngle's uh, going to have to do this on his own if he's going to get across to the break before the bunch get there. The bunch fans wide across the road. That's a significantly reduced group, isn't it? Now we've got the Enal cousins still there for Team Sky, but uh, we did assume that they were all working for Kwiatkowski. Certainly he was at the back of the line when they were doing the work earlier on in this race. Uh, a bit of a surprise, really, to see him distanced at this point. Uh, he had been looking pretty good, from my point of view, most of the way through, but uh, still with a group of 60 or 70 or so riders. Lots and lots of big names here, but it is a surprise to see this man, Gilbert, etc., out the back. So the superstars are going backwards and it's being left to other riders to take it up. Nordhau got picked out in that group for Team Sky. White Poles as well to the fore as well. How do they change their plans? Well, it's going to uh, involve attacking, that's for sure, because they haven't got uh, someone with a real punchy finish like Kwiatkowski left in there anymore. We have seen, as I said before, uh, Lars Peter Nordhau go on the attack here at Amstel Gold, and I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him launch something somewhere, but uh, leaving it until the Cowberg is a very risky uh, strategy to have. Of course, at that point, we'll uh, probably see the likes of Gerens and Matthews after all the hard work from Orica Greenedge trying to play out the last part of uh, what have been their tactics for the day. What a ride from uh, Daryl Impey and Albacini again, as you said earlier, Declan, they're both riders who uh, on another team on the right day could potentially uh, get on the podium or even win this Amstel Gold race, but uh, laying it all on the line for their two leaders here today. Arika Greenedge have the numbers, Team Sky have lost their favourite, but they've got numbers in there as well. Uh, just uh, trying to pick out to see was Ben Swift still in there, capable of getting up the hill and sprinting at the end of it. He's uh, one to watch out. Watch out for us, the breakaway group still out there. Tell you what, 17 kilometres from raining, you wouldn't have thought it that no. uh, six riders, uh, well, five riders from that initial group of 11 could have hung on as long as they have. Lawrence de Vries on the front at the moment. Yeah, Matteo Monteguti uh, next up. Matteo Bono, two Thank Italian you. riders. As Bob Jungels picks up at the front of the bunch, his breakaway attempt fails. So now just 16 seconds for those five breakaway riders up front as they try to hang on at the back end of Amstel Gold. Bob Jungels has tried, hasn't worked out, and he takes position on the front of the bunch as the counters looked like they were about to uh, ratchet up. Matteo Bono, this is for Lampre and Italy. 32 years of age, knows his um, time out front in Hamstel Gold is uh, limited at this point. Alex Howes has been one of the strong men at the back end of this uh, breakaway attempt. His fellow countryman, Larry Warbass for Team EM Cycling. Matteo uh, Monteguti for AG Tour, Le Mondial and Lars de Vries is at the back. Those are the five riders up front. You see in the background, massed across the road is the bunch and uh, very prominent Team Tinkoff. They've got former champion of this race, Roman Kreuziger, won it back in 2013. Kizilovski could uh, potentially do a job for them as well. Maybe uh, anyone else in their order you'd... Uh, yeah, I'm uh, keeping my out for um, Michael Volgren, the Danish rider. I think he's still there just uh, to the side, actually, of uh, Roman Kreuziger. He's a man that uh, is very capable on this sort of a circuit. Uh, you might remember a couple of years ago, the World Championships, which uh, Mihal Kwiatkowski won. He was uh, up the road a little bit early, and he almost managed to hang on to the coattails of the Polish rider as he came past on the final lap. He was very, very strong that day. The course not too dissimilar today, and I know... Uh, I mean, spoken to a couple of people close to Volgren that uh, he is feeling particularly good and did a massive job for Alberto Contador last week down in the Basque Country. 
Aldosini on the front, followed by uh, Wout Pose. That's Aldosini for Team Orica Green Edge. Next up, Wout Pose for Team Sky. Lars Petter Nordhaug is very prominent. Rui Costa for Team Lamprey. Former World Road Race champion. Would really enjoy that finishing hill. Not so sure he'd fancy uh, bringing it all the way to a sprint. Wouldn't be at all surprised to see a Lamprey try and set something up for him not too long from now. All depends on the legs he's got. They look good at the moment as uh, Roy Costa tries to stay uh, towards the front. I mentioned they now, Cousins. And See Ala Philippe hovering there as well from Etik's quick step, just making a couple of adjustments to his jersey. He was uh, kind of the revelation this time last year of the Ardennes week, wasn't he? After uh, coming very close in both Flesh Wallon and Liège, Baston Liège. Had a tough winter, I think. Uh, some illness problems meant uh, he wasn't on his bike training as he would normally have been doing. But uh, we saw him on good form, as we mentioned earlier on in our programme in Brabant's appeal on uh, Wednesday, working for Vakot, who we understand is still in this group as well. So uh, two cards at least still to play for the Etix Quickstep team, and they would dearly love to, uh, to win a classic here over the next few seven days, wouldn't they? After, uh, was, uh, st uh, was mononucleosis, glandular yeah. fever, as we call it, in this neck of the woods, and that can really lay you low, and for a long, long time as well. So he's managed his recovery very, very well, and Alaphilippe uh, finds himself in contention for a major classic race victory. Well to the fore, looking like he's got the legs. Inside 10 miles to go, 15.3 in new money. The breakaway group are still there. They're about to be caught inside 10 seconds now for those five riders up front. Will any of them have the legs to hang on for a decent finish? It's been a wonderful performance. The breakaway uh, and the bunch behind now strung out under the combined efforts of Albacini and Impey, who are sacrificing themselves to try and set something up for Simon Gerrans and, of course, Michael Matthews. Michael Bling Matthews, second in the World Championships uh, in Richmond last September. Can he go one better? Well, it looks to me that uh, Peter Seri of Vetic's Quick Step is the man who's made his way across to uh, the last of these uh, breakaway riders, but uh, nothing really going anywhere with those two guys from Orica Green Edge still doing all of that work on the front. Uh, they've been there for quite some time now, Declan, haven't they? But uh, showing no signs at the moment of uh, losing any strength. Daryl Impey and uh, Michael Albacini. Piffling 70 kilometers an hour at the moment. Doesn't look uh, too difficult, does it? It's a very, very impressive job uh, being done. And as to now, how, uh, the breakaway group has been towed back. Why is Lawrence de Vries on the front? He's been asked to by his team to set, a, set the tempo, make it difficult. And he's, he's probably not got too many matches left. Maybe just one to burn, and he's just going to uh, ride it out. On the front, has a little look behind, and you can shake hands. Uh, with Montagudi, House, etc. It's uh, all done at that. Bakoc is starting to uh, sniff back towards the front a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I, um, I kind of written him off in my own head earlier on in the race, uh, looking at his body language up the Kalberg with over 60 kilometres to go. But uh, gradually, surely, but slowly but surely, he's uh, made his way towards the front. It's taken him uh, 230 or 240 kilometres or so, but uh, he's there now and certainly a big threat for this race today. Peter Veening in there for Team Rompot. And he knows how to uh, get a result in this race. Simon Clark as well for Team Cannondale. Not to be uh, ruled out. Loic Vliegen, as you mentioned a little earlier, Dan, well to the fore. And Michael Valgren is very much in there for Team Tinkoff. There's a man who we haven't mentioned so far, Michael Clark. Uh, sorry, Simon Clark. Number 161 on his back now, riding for Team Cannondale, of course, after moving over from Orica Green Edge. Matt Heyman's still there, look. He's managed to get himself back into this group. What a ride from the Paris Bay winner last week. What a work ethic. What yeah. an extraordinary uh, character, I tell you. There's a lot of people would uh, go partying for about six months if they won uh, Paris Bay, but he's straight back to work within a couple of days, and he knows no other way. A man who has. Uh, enshrined turbo training as the must do thing for every bike rider for the next uh, 20 years and made himself very unpopular with me amongst others for uh, for that very fact because uh, well he was injured early in the classics campaign the only way he got himself to roubaix was by churning out the hours on the turbo and he got himself uh, he got himself properly fit for it didn't he 
Wonderful performance. His arm has fully recovered. He's taken that victory, and now he's uh, on domestic duty for Team Arica Greenwich. Setting a tempo with just over 12 kilometers remaining. 12 kilometers uh, remaining. The next uh, climb they've got to face comes in about uh, two kilometers from now, the Ben Mellerberg. Team Arica Greenedge want this one badly, don't they? They are organized, they're all racing for each other, and they know exactly what they want. Edvald Bosenhagen has managed to get into this group. That's an impressive performance because it looked like he could have been uh, in a little bit of trouble earlier on. Edvald Bosenhagen, many people believe he's, uh, he's a dark horse for favoritism. Crushingly disappointed, I think, really not to come up with uh, at least a podium finish in Roubaix last week. Himself and Tom Bone, and everyone was looking to them as the uh, the fastest finishers as they approached the velodrome. Bone decided he didn't want to risk it against uh, Bose and Hagen. Went up the road with Matt Heyman. Looked like uh, it was a gimme for him in the sprint, but at the uh, sprint at the end of 250 kilometres of racing is a very very different proposition to that over 160 kilometres. Yeah, certainly uh, something we've seen very many a lot of times in the past, haven't we? Where uh, we've expected somebody to easily win the sprints at the end of one of the monuments. Uh, on paper being very much faster than the people that they are with in a breakaway but uh, as you said Declan so often that just comes down to who's the freshest and uh, who's feeling the best in the last bit rather than how good you are at sprinting normally so uh, that's certainly the case last week but so impressed to see Matt Heyman still in this race he's uh, said in interviews in the past that the reason he has never led teams at the Cobble Classics previously is due to a lack of confidence well it seems that uh, that win in Paris-Roubaix Last week has instilled a lot of confidence in Matt Heyman, the Orica Green Edge rider. He's uh, now on the front of this group, doing everything he can to keep it together for a Michael Matthews or potentially Simon Gerrans win at the end. Now, there's the man we've mentioned uh, quite a lot this afternoon. We get good sight of him in that Czech National Champions jersey. It's uh, Vakoc. Vakamulova uh, just uh, riding in his wheel, and well, he might. Not a bad wheel to pick because Vakoc is on fine form. Stunning win in uh, Brabant's uh, Pahel last Wednesday, set up in many ways by uh, his teammate Alaphilippe from Edix Quickstep. So they've got cards to play. Orica Greenedge certainly know they have. And Matt Heyman. Well, there's no sign on his face of the effort that he's making, but uh, if you want to know the effort he's making, look at Michael Abbasini sitting in his wheel because he's really struggling just to sit on at the moment. Of course, he's made some big efforts himself. And uh, was up front a little bit earlier, wasn't he? He uh, hit the front before Heyman. They're timing it right, aren't they? They're parceling out the energy of their riders. Looks like it's a good job at the moment. There's the route through to the finish. Still got a couple of climbs to get up. First of those is the uh, Bemellerberg, some of which is, well, they reached the bottom of it with about uh, 8.7 kilometers remaining, so about 1,300 meters to the bottom of this climb if the road book is to be believed. And the ticker. And or the ticker. When's the next attack got to come? A bit of a phony war at the moment, Dan, because you feel there's uh, many, many riders in here that really can't let it, uh, let it go all the way to the Cowberg and many riders too that couldn't even contemplate a sprint from a group. Well, as you quite rightly just said, Declan, uh, it does look like a nice steady tempo that uh, Matt Heyman's setting on the front at the moment, but I can tell you that it's quite a high speed, really, that they're going, certainly just high enough to uh, kind of dissuade, really, anybody from making attacks. That's, of course, exactly what uh, the idea at the moment is for Orica Greenhouse. They don't want anyone to go up the road or feel like they've got a chance of getting up the road and staying clear. They want uh, what's left of this group to come to the foot of the Kalberg for the last time with a few kilometres to go, or two or three k's to go, all together still, so that uh, they've got the best chance of taking victory. Still going to be so intrigued to see the way that they play things between Michael Matthews and Simon Gerrans. Uh, as we've said before, they are not going to race together much this season, just this race before the Tour de France, according to sports director Matt White, but they've got such similar qualities, haven't they? Indeed they do. They have riders that can do the same thing. There are plenty of riders that can do different things as well. And they have all the options. A lot of Yumbo going to pick it up as well as we reach the bottom of this, the penultimate climb of Amstel Gold. Larry Warbass going again. Well, that's an amazing performance from Larry Warbass. 
US rider. He's a big unit, isn't he? 25 years of age. And setting a tempo on the front for Team EM Cycling. A lot of Yumbo looking like they were trying to get involved, and no one, as you say, is just capable of getting off the front of this at such a relentless pace that's being set. Well, damage data still represented up towards the front by the Belgian rider Serge Powles. Matalin's been impressive as well, hasn't he? He's been quite alert up there a couple of times already, and uh, Edval Barsenhagen, who did so well to get back on, just suffering a bit towards the back. Bakoc, uh, there at the back again as well. well I just saw Edvard Bosenhagen going for a gel inside 10k to go. That suggests to me that he was uh, clutching his straws a little bit. And obviously the legs have gone a bit hollow, feeling the knock somewhat. And uh, Eddie Boss is not going to be the boss of Amstel Gold 2016. Who's it going to be? Albacini back on the front and uh, frustrated a little bit that he's seeing attacks from Tinkoff. Yeah, Roman Kreuzger, winner of this race just three years ago, decides that now is the time that he needs to make his move again. It was a much longer range attack which saw him take that victory back in 2013. Albacini digging so deep behind to try and make sure that this doesn't get too much of a gap. Yeah, it's like Albacini, you know, you get the sense that he hasn't got a whole lot left in the tank and just wants to make that one huge monumental effort that will make sure they neutralize a rider as dangerous as former winner Roman Kreuziger. And Val Bosenhagen will be looking for the sanctuary of the cars and the showers pretty soon. Albacini pulls off and leaves it up to his teammates. Is it uh, Heyman once more? Not sure about that, but certainly well, there's a gap there for Kreuziger. It's worth pursuing. It's worth persevering with. He's just got seven and a half kilometers remaining. One uh, climb to go once, uh, and that's the Cowberg, 2.6 kilometers from the finish. Tim Wellens now going for Team Lotto Sudal in the red there, coming across to Kreuziger, and that's an important point for Kreuziger. He would have hoped that somebody would have gone with the move that he made, but uh, actually it looks like Wellens has gone straight past him. Well, should he have waited? Should he have... Uh, well, no, you don't think too much about waiting, do you? You don't look behind yourself when you're inside uh, the last eight kilometres of a major international classic. And Wellens has absolutely drilled it. Kreuziger has been left to his own devices. The bunch behind fans wide across the road because it's really starting to hurt. There's no one in there that isn't feeling this right now. Orica Greenedge continuing to set a tempo. Wellens has a racer's chance. Surely at this uh, level of impetus, he's going to hit the Cowberg first what sort of a gap will he have? Well, he's got a few kilometres before he even gets there. I absolutely love watching Tim Wellens race. He never is afraid of going on the attack in all sorts of different races. We saw him in uh, the Eneco Tour on, on route to victory, going on a long-range attack. We saw it last week in Brabant's Appeal as well on the Wednesday. Didn't quite work out for him then, and it often doesn't, but he always tries, and uh, why not? He's got a pretty significant gap, the biggest uh, gap we've seen over the last 20 kilometres. Got the stage win as well, of course, at the back end of Paris-Nice. What an exciting stage that was, the final stage in uh, 2016, just a few weeks ago. 19th in uh, this race last year, managed to make it into that front group. So Tim, Tim Wellens knows what Amstel Gold is all about and has got himself the advantage that he requires. At just over six kilometres remaining in Amstel Gold, as Tim Wellens of Belgium, a 24-year-old rider, has got that narrow advantage. Just 12 seconds. How much is he going to need before, by the time he gets to the bottom of the hill? Cowberg is coming up. It's looming large in the imagination of these riders. They've been up at three times already. They have done over 240 kilometers of bike racing. Well, we're now seeing other teams having to take responsibility for the chase behind. Orica Greenedge, after all of the work from uh, the likes of Albacini, Darrell Impey and Matt Heyman himself, have started to run out of firepower there. So Peter Seri coming towards the front. Seth Van Mark actually was the rider on the attack from Team Lotto NL Jumbo. Not really making massive inroads into the distance and gap that this man here, Tim Wellens, has got. Yeah, well, Seb van Mark uh, did all the late attacking. It was some of the late attacking in uh, Paris Roubaix, Roubaix a week ago. Wouldn't be looking towards the Cowberg with any great confidence, you would expect. Not uh, really his kind of thing, but uh, well, certainly capable of doing a job for Team Lotto and El Yombo in terms of setting things up. Wanted to try and go across that gap, but that's a sign, I think, of what an amazing ride at the moment that Tim Wellens is doing. Yep. 14 seconds. Yeah, it's ticking up 
slowly but surely, isn't it? He's going to need a pretty decent gap, though, in my mind, at the foot of the Kalberg if he does want to have a chance of victory today. The way that uh, riders with ever so slightly fresher legs can sprint up that, go into the red. Quite a significant difference to uh, if you've been on a lone attack like Tim Wellens has so far. I would imagine he'd like around 20, but you can see Michael Matthews up here towards the front. It's really the first time we've seen him so close to the head of affairs. Uh, he'll be starting to get a little bit worried now that the pace is not perhaps quite as high as he would like. Yeah, floats to the front, but he doesn't want to be on the front, does he? Because uh, he's thinking about sprinting after the 1800 metres, after the Cowberg. And Michael Matthews, I think, probably a sign that he's got good legs. As you say, maybe just a little bit concerned that they're not closing down Tim Wellens quick enough. Could this be a famous solo victory uh, for Belgium because they've got to get organised quick? Are they going to give Wellens enough rope, enough opportunity? And he's, uh, well, his face is contorted, but his body is... Well, doing such an amazing job and looks like it's tapping out a metronomic rhythm at the moment. His hands flopped across the front of the bars. He just uh, moved his right hand, well, moves it over and back on a regular basis just to click the gears through. And Wellens, he can disregard that gap. It's not a minute and 21 seconds, but it probably is about 18 seconds at the moment. A little, not quite out of sight, out of mind. They know all about where he is and what he's doing right now. A little bit of panic starting to creep in for Team Arica Greenedge. And who's this on the front? Couldn't possibly be Albacini yeah, again. Albacini yeah. back on the front now, and this is very, very important for this team. They've done so much work to try and set things up for Michael Matthews and Simon Guerin so far today. The last thing that they want is for one rider to just pip all that hard work on the way into the Kalberg here. 3.7 k's to go. This is the very, very fast downhill that leads into that left-hand turn. So we've got a number of teams now working. We saw Astana come towards the front. Peter Seri now from Etix Quickstep trying to drive the pace higher, but it does look like Tim Bellin is going to have around about 17 or 18 seconds of a gap as they come to the foot of the climb for the last time. Oh, it's an impressive gap that uh, he has managed to eke out. Is it going to be enough? Tim Wellens is emptying himself, emptying himself, though, and knowing all about what he's got to do to get up this hill. So he's going to save just that tiny amount of energy and hope that what he's parceled away is going to be enough to get him himself up the hill. Inside, uh, what, three kilometres remaining in Amstel Gold. It's a select group of less than 40 riders. Riders, they're going to hit the bottom of the hill. There'll be a lot less than that still involved by the time they get to the top of it. 1,200 metres is all it is. Average of less than 6%, maximum of 12%. And the rush of adrenaline that Tim Wellens is going to get when he fears that crowd as they uh, pile down into this left turn. Vakoc is well to the fore. Lotto and El Yumbo, the yellow colours, they own it as they go into the left-hander at the bottom of the hill. They're in Valkenburg. They're heading for the top of the hill on the Cowberg. It's Wellens that has it at the moment. 12 seconds to the good. Will he be able to hang on? 12 seconds, probably not quite enough for this man from Belgium, Tim Wellens. You can see the riders behind now starting to bear down on him. Such a valiant effort from this man who's never, ever afraid to go on the attack, but slight stalemate here behind. No big moves just yet, but as you said, Declan, it is Team Lotto. NL Jumbo leading the way with Step Van Mark. Well, they can't afford to wait for too long. Van Mark setting the tempo at the front, but he's waiting, waiting, knowing the attacks are going to come. Vakoc on the left-hand side of the road. The right, as we look at it, those white colours, that's the Czech national champion's colours. He's riding with Edix Quickstep. As we see, is this Gasparotto possibly going on the left-hand side? Former uh, Champion Wanty Group Gobert, Gasparato going to try and rekindle the flame, try and relive old glories. And uh, while well, he's getting across the gap to Tim Wellens and managing to distance most of the bunch in the process. Wellens, it's not going to happen for him, but can he possibly hang on with the other riders from the bunch? Who else is going to be involved at the top? Gasparato trying to stretch it. Yeah, Gasparato now leading the race for Wanty Group Gobert. Just behind me, we've got Jan Backlance and AG2R, and then we have Michael Volgren of Team Tinkoff in the bright yellow there. Tim Wellen just hanging on, and behind that we've got Michael Matthews. Well, Volgren in the yellow, this, the yellow colours, is well able to sprint. He's also well able to climb, sitting pretty in third place as uh, Gasparato has got a few yards of an advantage. The bunch behind, they're all starting to look around, believing they can close this gap, but someone has to actually go and do it. Valgren is going across to Gasparato if they work together with just 1,900 metres remaining. We're inside the final 
two kilometers. Nordhout goes to the right-hand side of the road, or the left-hand side, right inside a picture for Team Sky, but isn't able to close the gap. So now it's up to these two riders. Gasparotto doesn't want to drag Valgren to the line. Valgren doesn't want to come round. What's the decision-making to do here? Well, this is going to be a long 1,700 metres. You could see behind, they were just starting to look at each other. Nobody left to do any work. Here comes Van and Dert of Team Lotto Sudal. We haven't seen him much so far today. Well, Van and Dert, who's uh, been top uh, 10 in this race before, has been waiting on the podium indeed, knows exactly what to do. And he's got a turn out of Michael, uh, Michael Valgren. Valgren just had needed a couple of moments to recover before he goes to the front. Team Rompot on the front, so that must mean that... Uh, Peter Reening is in there, there, thereabouts. Is that one of the Anaus sitting third? It's one, uh, a rider of lower stature, but these riders still have the narrow advantage. They're well inside the barriers. They're facing into a headwind. Do you see the way the flags are showing that this is going to be a tough cross headwind? Van Dert is a big unit. He can generate power. He's towing the brake along. Well, Van Dert of Team Lotto NL Yumbo still working on the front as best as he possibly can. He's got two teammates still left in that group behind we've got attacks here from BMC. BMC on the attack, trying to uh, jump across this gap. Vakoc sitting pretty in second place for Edix Quickstep as the uh, motorbike tries to get out of the way and make sure they're not going to get involved. Inside the last 400 metres, Ken Valgren and Gasparotto hang on. Vakoc finds himself on the front of the bunch and going for a long, long, long one and that's not going to suit him in the sprint. Valgren is going to have to lead it out. I think they might hang on. They're inside the final 200 metres. Gasparotto knows how to win this race. Comes out of the slipstream. Gasparotto goes on the right-hand side of the road. Has Valgren got anything left for Tinkoff? As uh, Gasparotto goes for the line. Can he repeat all glories? Yes, he can. It's a second victory. It's Enrico Gasparotto takes victory. And uh, frustration, I think it might have been from Colbrelli in uh, third place. But what an amazing performance. It is a victory uh, for Italy. It's a victory for Wanty Group Gobert. And it's a second victory in Amstel Gold for Gasparotto. Otto, and that is uh, an amazing performance for the man who's now 34 years of age, took victory in this race back in 2012, second in uh, Brabant Pale just a few days ago, so he knew he was on stunning form, and he played that one to perfection. Wow, that's going to be an emotional win for... Uh... Enrico Gasparotto and his team Wanty Group Gobert, that's going to mean so much to them. He doesn't get a moment to <laughs> gather his thoughts, does he? He's immediately surrounded by uh, microphones and his instant reaction. Well, you can be pretty sure he's pleased with that. Tim Wellens, it hasn't worked out for him. But let's uh, look from overhead, Dan, as they took it up. And Valgren had to lead it out. Well, yeah, I think it's a little bit of inexperience there from Michael Valgren, who was uh, not really found himself in quite such a situation before. He was determined to hold off the bunch, but in doing so, he did spend a lot of time on the front ahead of uh, Gasparotto over that closing kilometre. The Italian from Wanty Group Gobert, he's been around for a long time. He took his chance, he stayed behind Volga and he had a few looks around over that final K, he knew what the gap was, he knew what he had to do and uh, quite a convincing win in the end. Time enough for two arms in the air for Enrico Gasparato. He's an old stager, knows exactly how to play it. And rolls back the ears. Back to 2012, to his uh, previous victory in Amstel Gold, and joins a select group of riders who've won this race on more than one occasion. Well, he showed he had good form with that uh, stunning second place finish in Brabantse Pale just a few days ago. He knew he was coming back to it. He's just. Uh, to the fore in this race, year in, year out, no matter what they do, if they have the finish at the top of the Cowberg or they, uh, they bolt a couple of kilometres on at the back end, he knows exactly how to get to the front. And uh, we can't take too much away from uh, Michael Valgren because he, uh, well, he had to close that gap on the hill. 
momentary recovery and then found himself in a pickle, really. It is that tough, tough decision to make. Do I ride or do I not? If he hadn't ridden, I don't think that... Uh, if he hadn't ridden on that occasion, I'm not so sure they would have stayed away. All to the benefit of uh, Gasparotto, to the benefit, too, of Valgren. A second-place finish in a classic of this importance is uh, nonetheless a very important addition to his Palmares. So Gasparotto makes his way to the presentation podium. He'll hardly feel the pain 